right. Please rise for the pledge. I'd like to call the regular Board of Education meeting to order on Tuesday, April 23rd. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty, and justice for all. Roll call, Kelly. Ms. Vanderbilt? Here. Mr. Case Leo? Excused. Ms. Flynn? Excused. Mr. Rakowski? Excused. Ms. Stadler? Here. Mr. Singh? Here. Mr. Wolf? Here. Ms. Seward? Here. Mr. Wade? Here. Fire exits, Matt? Exits are in the back of the LGI. All right, tonight's workshop is on the budget, I believe. And it's going to be Dr. Landall and Anne Marie. So uh, at the last board meeting, we we uh, kind of formally went into uh, all the different things that we're proposing in the budget. And so tonight, I asked Anne Marie to put a presentation together that gets sort of in a Q&A style that explains the financial side of the budget. So Anne-Marie's going to do the presentation, then I'll just do a little wrap-up at the end and ask questions throughout. Okay. Thank you. So uh, our next board meeting is our budget hearing where we'll be going through all of it, but um, we decided to do something a little bit different. Um, just some areas that are a little bit confusing, more of like a um, frequently asked questions kind of format, so we figured we would um, do it that way. <clears throat> So I do get a lot of questions on why is the tax cap more than 2% and it is an extremely confusing calculation and um, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of information out in the public about 2%. So I, I kind of wanted to talk about the factors that go into the tax cap calculation. So um, in the purple box, the allowable growth factor um, and allowable growth factor is the 2%. So basically that's really the calculation that they're talking about. Um, it's either 2% or the or the, um, the greater of 2% or the consumer price index. So it's set every year. Um, and I think that's what kind of people fixate on. So that's part of the calculation, and that's where people really go with the 2%. But there are other things that actually help and add to the tax cap. Um, so our tax-based growth factor, which is in the green circle, um, and uh, we talked about that a little bit because it's been pretty significant for Beacon over the last two years. Um, and that shows a, a tax-based growth in the number of um, residences in, in the area. It also has an assessed value component as well. So for the last two years, that's been pretty, um, it's been in Beacon's favor. <coughs> Beacon's been the highest in Dutchess County. So it's, a, it's um, allowed us to grow our tax cap um, more than usual. Um, the capital exclusion in the blue circle. Um, we're allowed to add back any of our capital, our principal and interest that's related to renovations or additions in the district. Um, part of that calculation, you have to, of course, subtract any building aid you would get, so it's more of the net. And the important part that you've kind of heard in the news as well is that uh, capital, the capital for BOCES cannot be included in this calculation. So that's something that's still being lobbied in the state to try to change that. Um, payment in lieu of taxes are also called pilots. They're an add and subtract kind of thing, but those are arrangements that are made with uh, businesses to come into the area. Um, they pay a, a reduced amount over a certain number of years, and then they go onto the tax rolls. Um, that's an agreement that's usually done with, on the city or the county level or the Office of Economic Development, and it's just a, a, a contract that we basically get. I put in TRS and ERS because in the past, those have been also ways to add. Um, if TRS or ERS um, which is our both pensions, if they go up more than 2%, then we get to add back a little bit more as well. So those are the kind of things out there. Um, I, I hope that helps a little bit because it's, it's difficult when, you know, the state always talks about the 2% tax cap and we come forward where our tax cap right now for this year is 4.4%. So another question is kind of how do, you, how do we pay for the budget? So I thought revenue sources would be a good way to talk about that. So the two bigger... Um, purple and blue uh, um, rectangles um, are our state aid and our tax levy. And I made them the biggest because that's the most significant revenue that we get. Um, state, we basically, and as you know, we went through the process, state aid, we kind of get the governor's run, and then we get the final budget, and then we kind of formalize and finalize the budget. Um, the tax levy is, is a finite number um, based upon all the other revenue that we get, and then it has to fall within the tax cap. 
But some of the other things I just kind of wanted to mention um, are other revenue sources for Beacon. Um, so we, I put in fund balance and reserves, and we've talked about that before, where we use some of our reserves and fund balance to kind of keep uh, the levy at the cap level. Um, we get a refund of BOCES prior year, which means whatever we pay to BOCES on a contract, if we don't use it, they reimburse us the following year. Um, so BOCES is not allowed to have revenue. They're not allowed to keep the district's money. Um, so that's part of the, the budget and the miscellaneous portion of the budget. Uh, Medicare reimbursements, you heard Dawn Candelo during her budget presentation in special ed talk about Medicare reimbursements. And um, all the districts have struggled over the years. They changed the rules of that. Um, we've had some staff changes here, and she has a new account clerk who has been very diligent about making sure that we have all the information. Because if you don't have a signature or a certain piece of information from the parent, you cannot get Medicare reimbursement. So we've seen a significant increase in that area, which helps because that's another revenue source to kind of help us grow our budget. Um, facility use is another area um, that we talk about. So if an um, organization comes in that is a for-profit company that wants to use our facilities then, and we charge them, um, that's another revenue source as well. How, yes. How often does that happen? It seems like a very small revenue source, isn't it? It's, it's small in comparison to state aid or tax levy or fund balance and reserves, but it's become significant. So we do have organizations that pay. We have organizations that pay just um, the salary component, um, but that's really only for not-for-profits. So um, we do have, a, we actually turn people away. I mean, we have a beautiful building here in the high school. Um, that's mainly what we do, but um, we also have a lot of organizations that are not-for-profits that use our buildings for no cost. So um, City of Beacon for Beacon Rec, um, for their after-school program, there's other uh, organizations that are able to use. They have to sh prove to us that they are not-for-profit um, and a certificate of insurance not to do that. But it is a, it's not a significant revenue source. But I, I kind of wanted to give you an example of other things that are mi under the miscellaneous portion okay. of the budget. It seems larger than I thought it was. Yeah. Um, and interest. Um, interest was never a big deal in the last couple of years, but we, we have been getting some interest income. In years past, it's been extremely significant when the interest rate is more. So all of those things kind of kind of mesh together. Um, I tried to put it in kind of a color-coded way. So again, the tax levy is um, the highest amount, and then comes state aid, and then the reserves and fund balance we've talked about. The tax reduction reserve, I kind of put in the same colors. This will be the last year that we can use that. That was the million dollars that we received from Beacon High, the sale of Old Beacon High School. The previous slide, you had pilots. What was that for? Pilots are a revenue source, um, but pilots would be um, in the, the miscellaneous revenue section in that one million fifty thousand. So that was all of, like the yellow, the yellow portion. So facility use, uh, payment in lieu of taxes, interest, um, but what Medicare kind of pilots, reimbursement. What kind of pilots are we using for revenue? Pilots are um, agreements that we have. We, have. we currently have three pilots with the City of Beacon. Okay. So they're apartment complexes, and it's an agreement that was made with the City of Beacon, but it has a school district tax component. So um, the City of Beacon collects it, and then a portion goes to the school district, and then a portion goes to the library, because we also collect for the library as well. Oh, so pilot is just another word for in lieu of taxes? Right, so you're not, they're not on the tax roll. They don't receive a tax bill. They have a contract and agreement where they pay their portion of the school taxes, but it doesn't go into the tax levy because the levy has to, you have to be on the tax rolls on, um, to get the part of the levy and a school bill. Thank you. Okay. I just want to mention grants as well. So grants um, don't affect the budget that we put out to the, um, to the public to vote on, but they are revenue sources. So we do get Title I, Title II, Title III, and Title IV grants. Um, which together equal a little over a million dollars. Um, we get special education, um, which is 611 and 619 that help pay for some of the costs for that. Um, and our pre-kindergarten, and I mention that only because you'll see it in our state aid runs if you look at it, but I always deduct it from there. But pre-kindergarten uh, revenue sources stayed at 373,000 for probably the past five or six years. So it's always been, a challenge to keep the pre-K program um, because we, our expenses rise, our salaries rise, our benefits rise, but the pre-K program, so that so the, um, our school district has increased every year the portion of the pre-K program to kind of keep it running. 
But those are other revenue sources that help pay for uh, costs. And the other question I get is how much will my taxes go up, which is always um, a hard one to, to kind of talk about at this point. But um, So I wanted to talk about the tax levy versus the tax rate. So we saw on the other slide that the tax levy is, a, is the amount that helps us pay for our budget. And it's a finite number, right? So whatever, it, whatever we calculate it to be at the cap, it's a finite number. Um, the tax rate is calculated once you spread the levy amongst everyone in, in your school district to pay the taxes. So what affects that is your assessments. Um, we get our assessments in the summertime, and that's when we come back to you right before the tax bills go out and talk about the final tax rate. Well, there's new properties that go on to the tax rolls. So basically the levy stays the same, the new properties come on, so you're spreading the same amount of money over more people, so that, that basically makes the tax rate decrease. And then the star exemption kind of fits in there as well. So the star exemption goes down a little bit every year, so it kind of affects um, the way we calculate the tax rate. I do want to say um, on this slide for Beacon, for Beacon City School District, so all three municipalities, the tax rate has actually decreased last year and the year after. So why did that happen? New properties came on, assessments went up. So it, it, it actually, when we talk about how much your tax rate will go up, and, and I, I mentioned that our, our uh, tax cap is 4.4%, our tax rate is running about right now about 475 on an average amongst that. When I come back to you in August, it won't be that because we use the assessments from last year because that's the best information that we have for now. But, but we anticipate, you know, talking to the city, talking to the town, there are definitely new properties that will come on the tax rolls in the summer, which will raise all of the assessments and the available properties, so the tax levy will go over more properties than it is now. Um, and then uh, I just want, we wanted to talk again about the focus areas of the budget. So uh, this was, yeah. you wanted to do that, you're great. Um, so we just wanted to uh, reiterate, uh, Take one more opportunity to just talk about some of the things we're really excited about in this budget. <clears throat> class size reduction, we're adding a teacher at the elementary level uh, to further reduce class sizes. I've shared this statistic a lot that 50% uh, of our elementary classes are below 20. The other 50% um, minus one class is between 20 and 24, and that one class is a fifth grade class of 25. Um, so we feel like this one additional teacher will help further that work. Uh, additional coursework at Beacon High School, I won't go into great detail, uh, but we're adding an intro uh, to Italian course, we're adding AP English composition, uh, we're adding a science research uh, class and you know business classes, a lot of different uh, coursework at Beacon High School that we're excited about. Additional mental health supports at the secondary level, uh, we envision this to be a, an additional social worker position. Uh, primarily housed at the high school, uh, hopefully someone who is also certified in drug and alcohol counseling and would be providing support to students uh, at both Roundabout Middle School and the high school. Increase access to technology tools in this budget. We will be expanding our one-to-one -one initiative into the high school, so all 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders will have a Chromebook, uh, not like the first day of school, but within the first few weeks of school. And every classroom at the high school will have a, an interactive white, uh, an interactive screen, uh, teaching screen. So the, those are things that I think that have been needed for a long time at Beacon High. So we're very excited about that. Expanded PD. <clears throat> I won't get into great detail because we've done that in a previous we've done that in a previous meeting. Uh, but just some really strong professional development focus areas in student engagement, curriculum development and uh, really expanding on that culture of care. Uh, that's a board goal, but also in our strategic plan. And that's through training either restorative practices or responsive classroom. Uh, increased opportunities with kind of the natural world. We're, uh, <clears throat> we're continuing our partnership with Hudson Valley Seed. We're expanding our partnership with Common Ground Farm at the elementary level. Uh, we're funding the building of a garden at Roundabout Middle School. And so we're just excited to kind of keep expanding that. We know our students really appreciate that. And then, uh, and Anne-Marie, maybe you can jump back in to talk about uh, this, and maybe the board wants to talk about this a little bit later in the evening. Um, it's up to you all. Uh, but we, in this budget, we also want to support uh, the new 
to her field uh, by some additional structures. So uh, this is a, a separate uh, proposition. Uh, a separate proposition. Sorry, my I'm coming back from spring break and <laughs> just grasping for words here. Uh, and Emory will explain that a little bit, but what we're uh, hoping to fund lights for the field and bleachers, correct? Yes. With this uh, money, and so maybe you can speak to that sure. just briefly too. So on the agenda tonight is a resolution to add another proposition to um, the ballot, um, and it, it it's uh, kind of long for the board, but um, it talks about using and a total uh, seven hundred thousand uh, dollars, five hundred thousand dollars, as you know, in the last. Uh, not this current year, but the prior two school years, we transferred two hundred fifty thousand dollars per year um, into the capital to have it available in case we needed it. Um, and th that money we would like to use for the lights. Um, and there's an extra. We would also like to use two hundred thousand dollars of unappropriated fund balance from the general fund to have as a contingent a construction contingency because our contingency going through. Um, after we opened bids and we went through the co-op, um, we were a little bit too close to the total amount. And just to be on the conservative side, we wanted to be able to have it just in case you know something unforeseen happened and, and we needed to move forward with that. Um, so it is on the agenda for the board to approve tonight and so that we can put it on the ballot. Obviously, the voters will approve that as well as the budget and the bus proposition. Um, also, in the general fund budget, we did put money aside for bleachers and for a scoreboard. So because things were a little bit too tight, we, were, we wanted to do that. We didn't want to open a turf field without a scoreboard. Um, the bleachers that we're looking at right now probably will not look exactly like the ones in Hammond Field, but they'll be sufficient for now. We're going to add to that as we go forward. Um, but we wanted to make it useful as soon as it's available yeah. to be open. And just some important points to remember about that aspect of the budget. Uh, <clears throat> We have a strong economy right now, which means uh, you know construction uh, companies are bidding jobs at a at a higher uh, monetary rate, and so we sort of knew that going in. We've heard that other districts were having that same issue. That's one of the reasons we're doing it. In terms of the lights, I think our initial hope, way back when the capital project started, is we'd be able to get it into you know the the project itself. Uh, but the reason that we're wanting to put the lights in is uh, we're putting a lot of resources into building this beautiful field. Without lights, we won't be able to use it that much. And so having lights increases opportunities for our students to use the field and the community. And uh, when we did a lot of community meetings about the capital project uh, a year and a half ago, uh, we really talked about that aspect of the field, that it's not only for our students, but it's also for community organizations to use and so we feel like the lights um, will really help um, will really help expand our use of this uh, of this really beautiful field just a couple other things I, I remembered when I stepped aside uh, you know there's some arts focus in this budget as well at the elementary level we had a grant this year to fund um, fourth grade instrumental music it has been a huge success uh, we have very high rates of fourth graders in all four of our elementary schools signing up for instrumental music this year. And so we will be continuing to fund that. Uh, so it's in a sense kind of a new budget initiative because it's no longer funded by the grant. So we're continuing uh, fourth grade instrumental music. And then at the high school, I neglected to mention this, we're also proposing a halftime art position. Uh, we're thinking that this person would teach uh, architectural design, interior design, possibly sculpture. Um, our arts classes at the high school are some of our high, most you know, well-subscribed classes by students, and so it seemed like an obvious uh, move for us to try to expand that. So it's very exciting to have a budget where we are expanding opportunities, um, where we're focusing on expanding professional development in the district, expanding opportunities for our students, kind of across the board um, and really I think the mental health extra mental health supports is something we haven't spent a lot of time talking about um, but we're very excited to have that as well um, it seems like it's tougher and tougher uh, the world gets tougher and tougher to grow up in um, for all the reasons we know social media uh, being a huge uh, example and so our secondary students especially at the high school having even greater access to mental health professionals we think would really help our mission. So 
this is a budget that we're growing, we're adding. Uh, <clears throat> we have our first budget mailer, the postcard, we'll share with you in a second. That will be going out uh, if you adopt this tonight. And, uh, and then I'll be doing some community meetings. I'll speak about exactly when and where during my superintendent report. Uh, and also going back around the PTOs who will have me. So we're really excited to be talking about this budget. And uh, thank you to the board for working with us step by step through this process and supporting this growth as a district. Matt, just a question about the mental health person that you're, so you're looking for a social worker or a psychologist for that. They're not gonna have the same responsibilities as the current social workers? Social uh, worker or it's gonna be a little bit worker. different? And they would have, they would kind of mirror, in a sense, our current social worker at the high school. We would like to really try to find someone with that additional certification of drug and alcohol counseling. Um, it is something that is not just an issue in Beacon, it's an issue across the country. And we try to connect our students to drug and alcohol counselors outside of the school. If we have one inside of the school, we just think it will... It, it will help all of our students access that. So our, uh, uh, our current social worker is Mrs. Faela, Faela. and uh, so this social worker would kind of work in tandem with her. Okay. So. And can I jump on that question? I know, um, I think it was last year, the state put out that there were gonna be these mental health requirements, which I don't, I don't know if they ever gave any detail about um, what those requirements were. There's a but, curriculum piece for it. Uh huh. So this doesn't, this isn't part of that necessarily. I I think it's great. I I think. No, I mean there's new uh, there's new regulations about guidance, mm -hmm. and Eric has actually been uh, working on that with folks, and we can kind of get into that at a future board meeting. Uh, but that um, the way districts are dealing with that, it's not additional staffing for that. Mm -hmm. It just uh, essentially I think what it means for us is elementary students, uh, for certain issues have access to a guidance counselor for like career, like intro to career counseling and things like that at a very sort of intro level. Uh, so Eric has been part of a team of uh, administrators in the district going to the meetings about that and kind of developing a plan. And this is just simply springs from, uh, quite honestly, we talk about Rachel and Nick, uh, our social worker and psychologist at the high school. And, I use the image that whenever I walk into the high school, I see one of them walking very quickly somewhere in the building, and they they just have huge caseloads. They both care deeply about what they do, and we'd really like to support that. And uh, you all know and see the research. Uh, I, I, I sound maybe a little glib when I say it, but I do really think with all of the technology and social media and whatnot, like it's just become so much harder uh, to grow up, essentially, and so our secondary students having access to more mental health, I think, is really a huge thing. It's something that Mrs. Soto has really advocated for pretty much since the fall of this year. She comes from a mental health guidance background herself, so um, along with all the academic things we're adding to the high school, um, I think this, this will really, really help. I just want to say, I mean, I, wel I welcome the support to the mental health um, component of the budget. You know, I, I also have seen uh, Ms. Fiella and, and Nick uh, run around everywhere, and, you know, and, and it's always, you know, students basically, from what I understood, you know, couldn't drop in because they were always busy with appointments. I mean, they, they would do their best to squeeze them in, but, um, you know, I think, I think, I think it's a very much added value. Um, and then uh, I remember a couple of years ago we talked about um, even the, um, mental health of athletes as well. We talked about that as well. So, you know, you were reminded me standing there. Um, so I definitely welcome that that addition to that. Thank yeah, you. no, we're um, it's very exciting. The only other question I had was and it sparked when I saw the visuals for a couple years ago we did uh, something with the uh, exemption or star with veterans. Mm -hmm. Do we have to do that every year or every couple years, or does that always carry over? It carries over unless you want to change it. Okay. So we did make a change at that time, so we made it available. It was like a multiple level kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, but if, unless but that's still in it. effect? Yes, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know if that had to be your, my still visuals. I was um, like, no, oh, with the star okay. exemption, right. No, it's, it's still in effect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I think that in the first graphic, Mrs. Corderoni, you, you talked about the 2% or the 
uh, I think you said the greater <coughs> the allowable growth factor, is it really the, the lesser? Or are we talking about something I'm else? I'm sorry, the lesser. The lesser. Uh, right. Yes. I'm sorry, that's correct. The lesser. Mm -hmm. So just so you know, these are hot off the presses. Mm -hmm. So we, um, the, the board adopts the budget this evening. We, they will be in the mail tomorrow. Um, and that will be the first round, and then the newsletter will come after that. One of the things we will work on, uh, you can maybe tell from tonight, is uh, really trying to explain the proposition. Um, you know, we want to make sure the public understands why we're doing that and the reasons for that. So, um, so if you get any questions at the board level, you can send them our way too about that. Having that frequently asked question at the beginning of the meeting is also great because that is a very popular question to ask. So you can just direct them straight to the. We'll put it up on yeah. the website tomorrow. Perfect. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. I need a motion to adjourn to executive session to review the employment history of particular individuals and to seek legal advice from the school attorney. So moved. Second. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried 6 0. Boards expect to return in what would we say? Yeah. Hour? It was challenging, but we, I did it. All right. I only had numbers on one slide. Um, so please rise for uh, a moment of silence for two former Beacon employees who recently passed. Yvette Zolotis, who was a retired teaching assistant for, for English as a second language, and uh, Kathy McCaffrey, who was a school bus dispatcher for over 22 years. Thank you. All right, any items on the agenda that need to be reviewed? Seeing none, we're gonna to go to student or school presentations. Seeing none, parent groups. Open to the public. Moving on right along, uh, superintendent report. All right, just some uh, <coughs> quick announcements. I am doing a <coughs> community conversation tour where I will be speaking about the strategic coherence plan, how it links to the budget, and you know other new things to share for the district. So this Sunday, April 28th, um, the meeting will be starting at 6.30 at the Beacon Light Tabernacle Church. On Thursday, May 2nd, we'll be meeting at Beacon Rec at 7. And Thursday, May 16th at Holland Library at 4.30. And uh, I'll also be, as I mentioned earlier, doing some PTO meetings um, between now and the budget vote. Um, our budget hearing is May 13th, but we'll go over, review the budget again and be open for comments from the public. I always like to try to not have that be the only conversation about the budget, but to also um, to go out uh, to these different public places to talk about, talk about it with uh, anyone who comes. Um, just a couple other announcements we're really excited about. Uh, we got to hear walking in tonight, Beauty and the Beast uh, practicing. And I think they were practicing with the musicians tonight. So that is uh, all this weekend, so we're really excited about those performances. And uh, just this is just a small thing, but um, it's uh, kind of a message for Craig. At the next PR meeting, um, what we'd like to do is bring uh, a couple different templates for a new website design for the committee to look at and get the feedback from. So we're excited about changing up our website this summer. So uh, <clears throat> again, really excited to get out with the community, talk about how the strategic plan links up with the budget. And uh, that's all I have for tonight. Alrighty, thank you. All right, we're gonna go to committee reports and including board comments. We're gonna start with our student reps to the board. No one any. Hello. Um, so I just was going to comment on the classes from a couple meetings ago. Um, it's really exciting to see all that. I know we've been working on it, uh, I think, since we started on the board. So that's yeah, very exciting to see all those new classes coming in. I know the students are very excited. A lot of them don't watch the meetings, but then when we told them about it, it it's definitely gotten around the high school. So they're really um, excited to hear that. The uh, conversations are starting with the guidance counselors for scheduling next year, and so everyone's excited about the new options they have. Um, I want to wish everyone taking AP test. Those are in two weeks. Um, 
those are starting, so I want to wish everyone good luck with those. And I think that is all I have for tonight. All righty, thank you. Hello, um, so pretty much the same as what Nelly said. Um, really excited to see all the new classes that are being implemented um, in the near future. Um, it's nice to know that um, people are listening and willing to um, take action um, from what we know of, the information that we know of brought to the board. So it's always nice to see that things are actually being done too. Um, and yes, um, Good luck to all those taking the APs. It will be difficult, but um, yeah. <laughs> I, I just want to add, I, I'll do a fuller appreciation of Noah and any at a later board meeting, but I think <clears throat> you know, a lot of the credit for the new classes really needs to go to the two of them and their leadership in um, listening to students, uh, gathering needs through either surveys or conversations, talking about what the board does, then relaying that to uh, Mrs. Soto. Um, their efforts have been just very powerful this year. I think they both kind of have a behind the scenes style of leadership, but yet it gets a lot done. <clears throat> and uh, and I, I really think, you know, all of the fun I get to say in talking about these new classes, Noah and Annie had a huge part uh, to do with bringing this about at the high school this year. So, but that's just, we're not gonna totally say goodbye yet, but that's just, uh, that's just about the classes. <laughs> Uh, but but I just want to say thank you for hanging in with the meetings and, and really working with the students to tell them what's going on here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Craig, you want to start? Uh, yeah, uh, <coughs> since uh, neither Mr. Rakowski nor Mrs. Flynn are here from the uh, facilities and operation, I guess I'll catch that <coughs> fly ball and go with it. So. They, things are moving along pretty well. As the agenda ind indicates tonight, we're going to be looking at awarding bids for the uh, four main contracts. So in the previous meeting, we talked about the, uh, uh, the special one relating to the turf field. So um, things are, so far as I know, I can tell, are on track, and uh, I'll leave it to uh, anybody who knows different to say so. But I'm very encouraged. Uh, and uh, also on our agenda tonight, um, we're looking to, as uh, Mrs. Corderoni explained, put a little bit of extra in there because we could use some wiggle room with uh, contingency and making sure that we can get a <clears throat> the lights on the field. So it's been a long road to get to this far, and um, it's going to be uh, one of those seasons where you hope that everything goes well and you don't have big weather problems or issues to get in the way. Uh, so knock on wood, we're good. Um, the Public Relations Advocacy Legislative, I have a conflict on the next scheduled date, which is the 15th of May. And um, I'll talk to the members about whether we might be able to push that to a different date. Um, either that or you go on without me. Um, recently I attended the uh, high school's college fair, which I thought was very well handled. Um, lots of colleges in attendance and uh, chatted with Mrs. Soto about a number of issues and how it might be a little better. I noticed uh, a large number of colleges that I thought might be there weren't, including practically nobody, I think nobody from New York City, which is certainly a place that has a ton of colleges. And apparently we didn't uh, score any hits there. A lot of the state schools were represented um, although I thought SUNY Purchase would be a really good one to try to pull in. Um, a lot of students attended, a lot of parents running around, and uh, it was a, a very good night overall. That's it. Thank you. Flora? I don't have any comments tonight. Melissa? I actually have a, a transportation question. Um, Anne-Marie, maybe you can tell me, how does, how does busing work for field trips? Do our, does our bus fleet take kids on field trips? If, if our buses are available for field trips, then yes. Um, okay. If they, the, I think the struggle is that a field trip, we have only a certain amount of buses, so the field trip's gonna be longer than when dismissal is. Mm -hmm. um, we try to juggle that. I know that um, some of the farther trips, so some of the elementary schools go to Albany or, or to, um, to the city, then they'll use charters. Okay. Um, and then, 
Uh, usually the teachers and the principal work through Ron to try to get a quote because he has some contacts with charters to see. try to get the best price. So they're, they have to fundraise to pay for those charters? In some cases, not in all cases. Okay. Okay, thank you. So. Anthony? Uh, good evening. Um, uh, I, first of all, I'd like to, to uh, wish um, everyone luck in the upcoming tests. Um, also, uh, I had the pleasure of, of um, working with a couple of the Honor uh, Society uh, students um, uh, at the, the Beacon Lions Club uh, food drive, um, and uh, I'd like to uh, thank them for um, helping to make the food drive successful. We were um, collecting food from um, the neighborhoods at Iris Circle and Hudson Avenue. Um, also, um, May 23rd is a career day at the high school here, so uh, definitely um, I invite my fellow colleagues to um, um, show off their, their, their careers to the students. Um, I, um, you know, I, and I, um, I also am glad to see the, um, the architecture uh, um, 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 potential in the, in the upcoming uh, staffing. Um, uh, last year, the, um, there was a group called ACE, the Architectures Career and uh, Engineers um, uh, um, that uh, was working <coughs> with um, bless you, bless you um, students who volunteered to, who were interested in those careers. Um, and it went very well last year. The problem was it, it, it burnt out the coordinator, the volunteer coordinator um, that was doing it. Um, so uh, it didn't happen this year. Um, and I, um, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it comes back again. It just needs a, an anchor of someone here, um, parent or teacher or what have you, to, um, to make that happen. And the curriculum included um, um, taking a site and proposing um, what to do with the site. Uh, it uh, included some design, some engineering, um, some costs, um, presentations uh, done by all the other local ACE uh, student teams uh, was at New Pulse and it was, it was very successful. And, and uh, one of our students uh, got a scholarship also. So um, that's part of the program. So I'm hoping that um, it finds its way back into the Beacon High School. Uh, the next meeting will be for both the policy and the diversity committee will be Monday, May 6th. Policy will be at 7 p.m. Diversity will be at 8 15. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Mary? Um, I have no comments other than that the curriculum committee meeting is tomorrow at 2 30. <coughs> I have no comments either. Besides, I'm excited about the budget. All right, we have a vote for the BOCES budget and candidates. I need a motion to approve um, the BOCES administrative budget for the 2019-20 um, school year in the amount of $4,656,822. Motion. Second. Any comments or questions? Is this a ballot vote? Kelly, is this a roll call or no? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried 6 0. 12.02 uh, is a vote for BOCES candidate. Any motion to vote for either one Ralph uh, Chimetto to serve as a board member for the BOCES Board of Ed? Motion. Comments or questions? Are there two positions open or is one position? It, it, There's two, but they we separated them. Okay. So this is the first one. Mm -hmm. And the, the none of them are contested. We haven't received any. I mean, last one, one year we got resumes and stuff, but correct. No one's contested. No. Uh, Mr. Chimano, I believe, has served for a long time on the Spack and Go board. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion 6 0. Any motion to vote for Ralph Coates to serve as a board member for the BOCES Board of Ed? Motion. Second. Comments or questions? Board yep. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried 6 0. All right, we move on to the consent agenda. 
The consent agenda permits the Board of Education to make more effective use of its time by adopting a single motion to cover those relatively routine matters which are included. Mm -hmm. Any member of the Board who wishes to discuss individually or a particular piece of business on the consent agenda may so indicate and that item will be considered and voted on separately, thus preserving the right of all Board members to be heard on any issues. Is there any item from the consent agenda a Board member would like pulled? 1307, 1310, 1311, 1312, 1313, and 1318. 1310, 11, 12, and 13. And 18. And 18. All right, I need a motion for 13.07. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I need a motion for the consent agenda minus 13.07, 1310, 11, 12, 13, and 18. So moved. Second. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried 6 0. I need a motion for 13.07. Uh, so moved. Second. I just wanted to comment that it's very nice to see some additional data that is being presented to us. I believe we have a new treasurer. Um, kindly help me with the pronunciation of her name, uh, Mrs. Schramm. Yes, Donnell Schramm. Donnell Schramm. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very pleased to see some additional reporting of data here. Great. Great. Okay. Thank you. I'll tell her. Any other comments, questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed 6 0. I need a motion for 13. I'll, I'll make a motion for 13 10, 13 11, and 13 12, and 13 13. Second. Same question for all four. Meredith is the second. All right, so for 13, we're going to do this all in one, 13, 10, 11, 12, and 13. All right, so any discussion or comments you have for any of them? Yeah, my question uh, My question is they're all signed by you already, so I mean, why, why are we going on it? They are, they, you only approved, um, the, you accepted the bids, you did not approve the contracts. Um, so we asked Anthony to sign them. Um, one of the contractors actually started work um, this past week at, during spring break, so we wanted, but the board still has to approve the contract. They were um, finalized by the attorney last week, but we didn't have a board meeting, so that's why this is So the electrician, he has double signed already, and HVAC, Myers, and Southeast. The other ones will go out tomorrow after the board approves them for their signature, but uh, JJ Sass came signed. So some of the work that was done at the high school was running electric, um, and we can't do that during the day when there's students in the building, and it was the last time that we can do it before the summer, which would kind of put our field a little bit behind, so we wanted to do it while there was no students here. Was it, was this, was, I mean, I think it's unusual that we are, I guess, voting on something that's already been, work's already begun or agreed to or so? It's not the norm, that's yeah. correct, um, but timing in the spring break kind of messed up what was going on. So the thought process was that the board had approved the bid, yeah. um, so this was just the formal contract, but you had already approved the work being done at a prior meeting. So we don't expect this to happen in the future, I guess? No. Mm -hmm. Is the contractor kind of proceeding at their own risk in case something went wrong? <laughs> Not that I expected to. Yes, but they were doing it in good faith. I think Andy has to take his checkbook off before he has to write. That's fine, I can write the check. <laughs> <laughs> no further questions. Any? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried 6 0, and that was for 10, 11, 10, 11 12, and 13. I need a motion for 13.18. Motion for 13.18. But the, the start time says to be determined, and I guess the last time we, we approved it, 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 there was a six o'clock start time on there, and we had to change that. So I guess why is it to be determined this time? Because we haven't had a board discussion about start time for it. Okay, so so then we should have it now, since it's all, since an item for this. I would wait board. until more of the board is here. A third of the board's missing tonight, but I would definitely think that there needs to be a conversation as to when when it could start. So then I motion to table 13.18 till we have the rest of the board here. But if then if you don't set the dates, so it's mainly for the dates of the board meeting. To set oh. the dates of the board meeting, okay. you could determine the time at a later time. But to get the dates set? The, the dates help us plan for the summer. Okay. Uh, just different 
So Hiring, having dates when we, we take vacations, all that kind of stuff. All right, so we draw my table. Well, I, I did have a question about the date, actually. Um, so that organizational meeting, is it always that first? It has to be the first week because we're a city school. Okay. And so I'm probably always going to miss it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's one of the things being a city school. You have to have it in the first week. Okay. It's a law. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to break I, the law. It's a law <laughs> that I was pushing to really love. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, like a central school district doesn't have to have it the first week, but a city school has to. That's true. Okay, that's good to know. Any other comments about 13.18? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried 6 0. I need a motion for addendum resolution 042319B. Motion. I need a second. Second. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried 6 0. I need a motion to adjourn the meeting. Motion to adjourn. Second. Comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried 6 0 at 826.